Hello and welcome. I think we're over the, we're, we're over here. Okay. Um, video screen's a little bit off this time around, but we'll make it work. Totally fine. Welcome to the latest anime news for the week ending. Oh, I can't do this. <laughs> Hold on. Um, I have something in the wrong window. I got to move a window around, and then we'll be able to do this. There we go. Just take a minute. Welcome to the latest anime news for the week ending July 10th, 2021. Um, and let us begin. We'll have just sort of a, a different uh, talk this time. We're just going to talk things through. Uh, beginning with Future Boy Conan was announced for a North American release this week. Very exciting. Uh, Future Boy Conan was Hayao Miyazaki's first and last and only anime TV series. It is a sci-fi adventure, post-apocalyptic-esque uh, anime series. Uh, also came out in the 70s. Speaking of 70s anime. Uh, we licensed by G-Kids, the folks who've been doing a lot of the Miyazaki and Morihosoda films in theaters. And it will be a 4K restoration Wow. With an English dub, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, and one reason dubs are important is because um, uh, an anime TV series um, generally can only... Um, uh, it's rare for a sub-only uh, anime series to get showed on television. So with a dub, there's a chance they could actually show Future Boy Conan on TV somewhere in North America. So that's pretty exciting. Um, uh, Conan was very... Um, uh, pretty big deal back in the time. People were very aware of, of this as uh, an anime series. Um, they were aware of, of Miyazaki with his work at, at Toy. Um, and so it was definitely a feather in his cap. Um, Conan ended up becoming a major inspiration for Castle in the Sky uh, with character designs and, and, and concepts and so forth and so on. Uh, and so we're finally going to get it. I will say... Um, <laughs> They show some of these sort of restored images from Future Boy Conan, and um, you can tell it's been, you know, improved from 1979. And that I don't think the staff really expected this show to be shown in this sort of resolution. It looks <laughs> fine, but it's like there's a lot of little things where it's like, oh, the line doesn't quite connect there, and all these other little things where just you know, you're 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 moving quick for your uh, for your anime series, uh, your anime TV series. Um, so I'll be curious to see. And also, like, there's one of the problems with shows these old, um, and I'm not sure if it's, it's if it's a thing with uh, Conan, but if you have like multiple layers of cells on top of each other, that can like darken some of the the um, uh, other images on there. So like a character will be standing next to somebody somebody else, but like will be one shade darker than them. And I'm seeing. Things that look a little bit like that in some of these images, so we may have that effect as well. Um, so we'll see. We'll, we'll see how much, what the 4K does to this particular release. Um, Hopefully, it'll just make it. It'll just make it more endearing. Yes, right? exactly. That's that is the hope. Quirky, quirky, and endearing. exactly. <laughs> um, have you guys <laughs> seen um, this at all? Not me. No, no. I'm looking forward to it. It's yeah. Point. So now it seems that that point has come. Yeah. <laughs> I I feel like I have, but I can't remember. Hmm. Did, okay. Did you and I watch it? I don't think so. I mean, it's like 26 episodes, so it's it's a, oh, a fair like, But I may have shown you like an episode or two. Probably, Wouldn't surprise probably. me. Yeah. That's probably what it was, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, the question is, do you think... Um, what channel do you think would show Future Boy Conan? Like, where could this possibly go on American television? Because it's kind of a kid's show, but, like, it's pretty dark. It's kind of Castle in the Sky-ish, you know? Uh, you know, where does this fit? Classic anime does not have a, a lot of homes on American television. I think I'd, they'd probably put it on G-Kids. I mean, I think, I mean, like on cable. Cable. Yeah, like what? What cable channel would show this? Maybe Anime Network. Is that still around? Yeah, I think it is. I'm, honestly, okay. I haven't checked it in so long. 
But, you know, I was trying to think, it's like, well, you know, Nickelodeon with Airbender, it's like they're used to long yeah. sort of yeah. feeling they could go for this. But I, I'm not entirely sure how dark Nickelodeon would like another mm -hmm. show to be shown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That they haven't created themselves. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, Disney could grab a piece of that. But, I, I, you know, again. <laughs> yeah, I, that's, a good, that's a good call. Yeah. I'm not entirely mm -hmm. sure. I mean, Disney loves content and disney plus they're always needing more stuff so that could be an easy pickup for them hbo max that's true did do yeah. all of the the, the, the the ghibli films and okay. so there's that history and hbo yeah. you know that that's not that's not crazy for hbo hmm. i mean i'm assuming netflix will will get it and mm. broadcast it at some some point but it won't Maybe. get i mean that'll be netflix ish that will mm. be commercial television necessarily mm -hmm. or cable television yeah yeah um yeah i mean because i i certainly obviously sci-fi channel is not going to do it no um no, i don't no. think cartoon network is no i mean there could be a chance if they got it you wouldn't see all 26 episodes immediately yeah. you'd see it over like the next five years mm -hmm. so, yeah yeah you know? yeah it's not a great fit for them no. Yeah. Because you'd only have like what a, the the tsunami slots. Mm -hmm. You've only got you can only show a little bit of it at a time because everything else is already sort of slotted in there. Mm -hmm. So it would be like an episode a week for twenty six weeks. Yeah. yeah. At best. So. Um, and and uh, uh, Fungifago is is absolutely correct in uh, uh, in chat. If you've seen Keep Your Hands Off Azoken, uh, then you've seen a bit of Future Boy Conan because that is the anime in episode one that uh, inspires the main character to get into anime. Um, oh. they, they, they show clips from Future Boy Conan and sort of... And obviously they, they reanimate it um, right. for, for their show, but it, it is clearly Conan in those clips. So, oh, and we know how much there. I love Isaac Ken. Yep. Oh. So there we go. <laughs> there we go. If you love Isaac Ken, you'll, you know, you might want to check that out. Nice. Um, moving right along... Into more legal news, uh, UFO Table, the anime studio, um, has been officially indicted. Them and their founder, representative, director, and president, Hikaru Kondo, um, for failing to pay 1.24 million U.S. dollars in taxes. Um, UFO Table posted a statement on his website on Friday saying, we've already paid it, we filed the corrected tax return, pay the appropriate amount. So we're all good, right? Um, the, uh, yeah, uh, this, this broke on the Kyoto News Service. Yeah. Um, this was, uh, tax owed over the course from September 2014 to August 2018. Mm -hmm. So it was not like one year. It was over the course of a lot of time. Um, previous reports in the Mainichi Shimbun claimed that Kondo hid about 30% of the proceeds from some of their anime themed restaurants in a private safe. Um, and they owed $1.28 million U.S. in taxes when that investigation was developing. Um, there was a previous report that they misappropriated funds from a charity auction from the Great Tohoku of Earthquake. Course they did. Of course they did. That would violate the penal code and carry a, potential, a prison <laughs> sentence of up to 10 years. You know, if you're going to do this, yeah. you all hog. Go um, you know, just go from being like, you know, damn the government and their taxes to like, screw the charity. charity. Like, ah, oh, dude, really? The uh, Tokyo Regional Taxation Bureau had searched UFO Tables, um, UFO Tables offices in March of 2019, but hadn't found anything uh, or they didn't file any charges. Now, why are we saying this? By the way, Kondo eventually resigned. Why are we mentioning this? UFO Table makes Demon Slayer. Right. And Fate. <laughs> Which means they print money. Yes. Lots and lots, lots of, money. of money. They're a really big studio. This is not good. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm pretty worried about this one. This is, this is not a good sign for, the, for that. Studio. Why would you be, like, so petty criminal to, like, shake down your anime food <laughs> elements to hide it in the safe i mean I, oh god mm -hmm. like, are you a coffee former coffee yakuza or something <laughs> what are you doing i know i don't know 
Mugen Train is dumping boatloads, <laughs> train loads of money into like everything. So what are you doing? <laughs> You should prepay your taxes. Like, yeah, exactly. Give the taxing well, authority you know, like $10 million and be like, look, yeah, that'll be good for like a few years, right? Mm-hmm. Cool, cool. Thanks. I mean, that's – why they do that is like Iago in Shakespeare. You know, you do it because you can. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, case in point is the place I worked at that was owned by a <clears throat> grocery store. Mm-hmm. And um, so they – we weren't allowed to take tips for what we were doing. And mm-hmm. um, I'm being – purposely secure here mm-hmm. but i was in a job that i could get tips and we were allowed to have the tips and then we accidentally i accidentally found out that hey there's all those tip bags what are they doing in there oh, oh that's our coffee fund so they were using our tips to pay for coffee mm-hmm. now keep in mind that they had their entire chain that goes up and down the east coast. Mm. They actually start by, uh, sorry, a certain coffee vendor okay. pays money to have their kiosk inside. Wow. The, the said grocery store chain. So they can get the coffee for free should they want to. Mm-hmm. But they can Instead, take, yeah. so they, they do because they can. Yeah. So the, the look, look, look yeah. no, nobody ever said criminals were smart, right? Well, mostly. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, the ones that get caught, caught, yeah. right? Yeah. Why do they? Why do you think they call it dope? Um, right. right. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So here's the thing. Do you think this is going to be a problem for Mugen Train for these other? franchises like is this going to do anything or is this kind of business as usual well we've already I had th- a resignation true so. okay well you had resignation this is a company that clearly has divisions within it mm. you, mean, you, know, you have a restaurant you have this mm-hmm. you have that and so i'm willing to bet that the uh the wonderful tax people um by the way for those of you who want a good old 80s Maybe watch a taxing woman. It's very important. Hmm. Um, it's actually no, a really good movie about a woman tax collector. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, if they investigate, which I'm sure they will, hmm. the, the you know the, the company for the for, for uh, hmm. the train, and if they don't find anything, then that will be fine. The mm-hmm. division will be fine. Yeah. Because they're only going to go after whichever divisions are, gonna, are, are not right. paying. Mm-hmm. My bet is that they are absconding. There's a there's a cane in the gal mm-hmm. <laughs> somewhere, yeah. and they have lawyers who are who are trying to just shovel that money into whatever account they can shovel it into, mm-hmm. and, and not have to pay taxes. Yeah, yeah. So um, I I I would be worried in only insofar as if now if the United States said, oh we're going to tag team on this, then mm-hmm. you got a problem. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, as long as they've got all the, we're the appropriate paperwork and they've mm-hmm. been shoveling things into approved tax havens mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. and yeah. the extreme scrutiny that UFO, mm-hmm. UFO table is going to end up under for the next five years mm-hmm. will go by relatively unnoticed. Yeah. Um, yeah. Should we not support UFO table anime? Given the fact that they are misappro- they, they allegedly misappropriated Tohoku Earthquake <laughs> charity funds as long as the guy who was in charge at the time is mm. out then you know mm. you could, you, that's that's what you have a sacrificial lamb for yeah. <laughs> like, right. mm-hmm. we might be horrible but that guy was the most horrible mm-hmm. so he's gone already yeah point back says there'll be very much redemptive uh, charities happening in the next mm-hmm. six months yeah mm-hmm. yeah and i mean for for all fairness you have something like misappropriation of, of those kinds of funds. It's not typically the entire the company, company is company, drawn right. together in like a big auditorium and be like, hi, everybody. We're all we're employees. Gonna, we all work here. We're going to steal charity money. <laughs> right, Are you yeah. good with this? <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's yeah. like you shouldn't make the body it, politics it, pay for okay? like some yeah. stupid people's ideas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, did we lose Steve? Oh, oh, there, there he is. is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and to be clear, uh, Kondo resigned in 2019. 
Um, she's been gone for a while, and so the and the charge was against both UFO table and condo. So I, yeah. it, it sounds like it was this bad thing happened. We're now officially yeah. sort of acknowledging it. Um, but UFO table saying, "Ah, we've we've already paid it. We've already we've already settled our accounts." So yeah, hopefully this is not going to um, hurt them too much in the long term. Because um, I mean, no more fate. No one would ever make fate again. It just couldn't be no, no more Demon Slayer. It would never happen. It just couldn't. Never watched them either. <laughs> oh. You're a bad otaku, and you should feel bad. Um. <laughs> You're only a real otaku. If you exactly. Say yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. No, 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 no true anime <laughs> fan. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Nah, totally cool. <laughs> totally cool. Um, uh, speaking of questionable uh, anime studio behavior, uh, Mappa actually addressed some of the controversy online recently. Uh, there was a uh, Twitter thread, I think we mentioned last week, uh, from uh, Ippe Ichi, earlier this month, uh, complaining about a uh, a certain anime production that was being produced at MAPPA for Netflix and how low the rates were uh, for that. Um, and it got a little complicated because he was specifically complaining about uh, Netflix and that Netflix was offering this money and MAPPA was thus offering that money. That, that, was, you know, that was all MAPPA could, you know, uh, could offer because Netflix was being cheap. But then other folks sort of piled onto that thread saying, yeah, MAPPA sucks, basically. That, that MAPPA's um, um, uh, that, uh, condition, uh, factory-like conditions existed at MAPPA. That it was just not fun to work at, um, and it was not, not that great. Um, but MAPPA released a statement on Wednesday um, <laughs> talking about certain unannounced productions um, and uh, saying that uh, the information invites misunderstandings. And so they wanted to, 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 to clear things up um, so forth. They said they never offered unreasonable compensation to creators, and they use that term to mean not just animators, but also staff in general working on creative works. Um, they say they, they offer rates that are fair relative to the budget of the project, whether in current or past products, projects, and saying um, they never, they've never forced or coerced creators to work. Um, which, They're I mean... They're free to leave any time they want. Right. Um, <laughs> You're right. right. Well, it, it, it's a weird thing. Is that, you know, I, nobody is claiming that I'm aware of that MAPPA chains animators to their desks. <laughs> yeah. um, right. You know, nor that their, their, their rates are... are um, are not impacted by just the general budget of the project. Like we all acknowledge that some things are going to be cheaper than other things. Um, but yeah. Uh, now they also said that the anime they're talking about was not for a major platform or something about an existing TV series. I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, but uh, yeah, they're sort of clarifying what was going on in that particular situation. Um, um, and uh, what's going on all there. Now, the other side of the, the coin in this story is that MAPPA also um, recently announced uh, a new studio annex. Um, and it looks actually quite nice. Um, it's, uh, uh, it's got a lounge. Um, the desk materials are designed with like a warm wood uh, you know, materials. So... Um, and the, the notes on it explains, the lack of skilled animators has been worsening lately. One of the various causes is because skilled people in the anime and games industries have instead been going to China, um, which is in a good economic position. In order to secure the skilled talent, the workplace environment has to improve. To that end, we focus on using wood with warmth for the desks and creating an open space lounge where people can refresh themselves. In the future, we're thinking of gathering all the Annex Studios for this production company into one big site along the Chuo line. We will create an animator's village brimming with nature and establish it alongside a shop and cafe that fans can also visit. Um, or, or, or you can just propaganda. pay them. <laughs> um, what's also interesting about this story is that the director of Chainsaw Man at MAPPA tweeted, and I'm going to quote the tweet, which is in, in translation, to give you an idea of how much Japanese you can fit in a tweet. It's one of the reasons why Twitter is so popular in Japan is because Japanese characters um, produce so long. So here's the tweet. We are making Chainsaw Man here. 
as in in this annex. It's close to the station and convenience stores, and its interior is nice as well. If you're a young and motivated digital animator, I encourage you to work with us if you've got the interest. Depending on whether we're able to prepare things for them, I'm thinking of proactively reaching out to students, newcomers, and people without experience yet in the future. So if you're interested, by all means, reach out. It's a hell of a tweet. Yeah. Yeah. But he, like, I got to say, that sounds to me like, hey, Director Chainsaw Man, could you, like, Post a little something like telling everyone how much you enjoy the new annex and how, how cool it is and how people should or, go to work or, for or us. Or it could be, hey, director, <laughs> yeah, could do be. what you're told. Mm-hmm. Well, I was waiting for the part that said they build a new annex where the animators' families will be will be <laughs> obliged to stay in comfort. What? Yeah. Wait what? a minute. Are you holding my family hostage? No, no, no. They're guests. They're guests of the studio. Who get back to work. Exactly. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Oh. Um, if you want little child to eat. <laughs> and again, why why should we care? This is the studio behind um, Banana Fish, uh, behind the final season of Attack on Titan. Well, they, they worked on it. Um, they've worked on um, Idol Magic Cinderella Girls in this corner of the world. Um, um, is it wrong to try to pick up girls in the dungeon? Kakigurui, um, Mirai, paint on that, but fair enough. Um, Persona 5, the animation, some tweening on that, Psychopaths, um, Punchline, Psychopath. bunch of work. Um, yeah. Mop has done a lot of stuff. stuff. Yeah, totally. Every time I hear that company's name, for some reason, I think of Napa from uh, Dragon Ball Z. Ah, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I, I think you said Napa is in like California. I was going to say, I always think the Napa <laughs> Valley. A fine wine from the Napa yeah, region. Yeah, so exactly. That's what I meant. It's Mappa a fine region. anime from the Mappa region. Oh, well, very good then. The Mappa yeah. village. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, here's the question. So, I'm... I think Mappa's in a somewhat of a difficult situation here. I suspect that Mappa legitimately is not getting... Chainsaw Man is not getting the biggest budget in anime, right? Yeah. I think they're in a situation where, you know, they're they're producing things relatively on the cheap. And so it's not like working at a, you know, at... at, at I'm trying to think of a, of a good example um, because Ghibli's not a good example. Um, Uf- UFO table? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> no, 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 um, no, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Um, but, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it is kind of factory like conditions cause that's kind of the nature of anime studio work. Um, the problem with the annex announcement is that it sounds like, oh, we're, you know, like all this money is going towards this annex, which will make things nicer for the, the animators, but it's not like paying their rent. Right. Right. Which hence my scream, or you could just right, <laughs> exactly. Um, so is but warm wood. You get warm, warm wood. wood, right? But, you know, money's cold. Oh, you, you know, you know what, you know what, warm wood sounds to me like fire. And what is fire? <laughs> fire is pain. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and and again, here's the problem. Like you know, I don't think anyone sat around and said, instead of paying the animators more money. Let's build an annex, right? Um, I don't know. But, yeah. Where is their studio located, by the way? Because if it's like prime real estate in Tokyo, they paid like a ridiculous amount of money yeah, for this. Yeah, I, I, sure. I get that. Um, but yeah, I mean, what can they do at this point? Like, you know, how do you solve this? Um, Again, assuming that they're not getting massive amounts and then you know laughing maniacally and putting it in a vault, what do they do? Uh, it's, it's, it's a brain drain for all of the studios. Like you yeah. somehow need to you know prioritize bringing in new animators, and the only way you're going to do that is if you can offer them a a living wage. Mm. You know, so right. it's great. Yes, a better environment is great. Mm-hmm. You're still going to probably make these people factory work, even in the warm wood environment. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But yeah. you know the the primary concern is if you can get these people some real wages, mm-hmm. and then you hook yourself up like Disney has done to Cal Arts mm. to make sure that you can right. draw people off of these programs, and that you know you bring them in for unpaid internships, free labor, uh, mm. turn in, uh, internships. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? And you start the synergy going, and then you're you're just gonna have to pony the money up. The annex is nice, but you gotta mm. pony the money up at the end of the day. Yeah, the, live. How do you get that money? Where do you get Where, that money from, though? Where'd they get the money well, for well, the you annex? See that, <laughs> right. You know? Well, it, here's the thing: is is that when you when you work in a business, I mean, this is about margins, okay? Mm-hmm. So what what you're doing is that is that the studios what what the studios have to do is make the the stream services or whatever pony up because mm. that's where the money's coming from. Mm. Or you're gonna to have to bite the bullet, and you're gonna to have to go investor route. Or you're gonna to have to bite the bullet, mm-hmm. and you're gonna to have to go advertisement route. Mm-hmm. Well, however you make that money, you, you have to. That's what you have to do. You can't just sit there and go, okay, we're gonna take our meager um, um, contracts from Netflix, from mm-hmm. you know uh, Hulu, or from from wherever. You have to find someone who's willing to pay for it, and then and and. But John's point is that if you're going to pay for it, though, you're going to need the quality. Mm. So you know you need the you need to bring those people in, and that's where you incentivize and you, you give good paychecks. My concern the there, I'm in. Mm. My, like for example, my business that I'm in right now, in the beer and wine business, it's it's all about margins. Mm-hmm. I will not deal with a distributor who's not, who is going to who's going to screw me over on on the margins if i mm. if, if i can get on average a 20 percent margin profit margin mm. why am i going to deal with you if you're only going to give me an eight percent margin mm. unless i can do unless there's a reason behind that which which turns into you know like how much of right. it am i actually buying it and making right. a profit on, on quantity yeah which is not you can't do on in this business in this yeah. business is about the quality of the work mm. So if you deal with people and you, you go, okay, we, we demand you you need to have to be able to somehow negotiate a better margin for yourself. Mm. And there are going to be studios that are gonna go, well, um, instead of doing the margin route, they're gonna do what a lot of retail does, which is what's the thing that we can cut easily the most? Well, you cut your rates, mm. pay rates. Mm-hmm. You cut your benefits. You cut mm-hmm. your because that's the immediate because that's the other problem is that's the immediate bottom line. If you're looking at a quarterly mm. fashion, mm-hmm. those are the best way to drop to drop down your expenses and to mm-hmm. make your margins bigger. Mm-hmm. It's false. It's 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 a false indicator, but that's what they do. So mm-hmm. that's probably what they're doing right now. Mm-hmm. So it's it's just a matter of just getting the right um, negotiation, the right mm-hmm. revenue path for what you do. Yeah, if and, you're gonna churn, if, if you're gonna churn out just like schlock stuff, mm. then maybe it is quantity. It, it is quantity. Mm. Maybe you go with the Netflix and say, "We'll provide you with 50 anime titles for the next three years. Mm. They're not going to be great quality, but here you go." Mm-hmm. Then you can demand a, a higher price, and then mm. you know you budget down from that. Yeah, or you you go high quality and you just go if you want, like for example, Ghibli. Can do this at any mm. time that they wanted to do, which is, oh, oh no, you're going to pay us a few million dollars for this movie. Mm-hmm. Appear on your streaming service, mm-hmm. okay? Because it's given. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I, I guess that's the problem that the the industry is having is that metaphorically, um, you know, everybody is, you know, only offering an eight percent margin, and so you know, if you're not going to take it, I'll just go to this next studio and they'll take it. Um, and the, you know, the production company system is is the, the, the system that's it's going after you know advertising and all the other stuff and that's you know that was the original solution to the problem is it will get you know ten different companies in this production committee and they'll all put money in and they'll all do all these, that sort of stuff um, but that doesn't work in the age of streaming um, where Netflix is you know is the big boy so to speak and they're just like here's the cash you're gonna make the thing done. Um, so yeah. Well, you, you could do, you could do what, uh, the Casper neighborhood in, um, California did with, uh, Coors. Hmm. Coors Light. Walk away. Hmm. The entire neighborhood just said would refuse to, to sell their product. Hmm. Mm-hmm. You could have animators just refuse to deal with Netflix. Yeah. I mean, it, it would be tough, 
yeah, yeah. tough and with them you know <laughs> in an already tough situation but yeah if and, that's what it takes to make people do listen and, and that's that's the and i think that's 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 you know a really important point is that i think this doesn't this doesn't stop or this doesn't change without like anime studios going out of business right like that that's the kind of right. thing that's going to happen as a result of trying to change this kind of stuff and so it's going to say we're not going to accept anything below you know x and they get nothing and they keep looking for stuff and, keep, and nobody gives it to them and eventually they fold because they just can't get, you know, and that's going to be a wake-up call, you know. Um, yeah. I, 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 I don't know how to, to, to solve this in a, in a non-dramatic fashion, unfortunately. I think it's going to take, I think you're absolutely right, yeah. it's going to take things like that, of people just saying, you know, we're going to fall on our swords on this one. Unionize. Nah. Yeah. Or, or you know, us otakus will have to sit down and just mm. go, we won't watch. Mm. Mm-hmm. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck yeah. on that one. I, I, know. That's, yeah. I mean, yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, mm. seriously, if, if you if you are you know if you're worried that worried about it, mm. you know, like with Netflix, um, yes, there's there's sixteen ninety five a month. You can just stay right there, just mm. by going. Nope, we're not doing this anymore until you improve. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it's gonna be interesting. It'll it'll definitely be interesting to see how and if this changes and. Again, to be yeah. you know, to be clear, this is one company out of a large right. industry. This is you know one example. There's lots of other things going on. Um, so I, I don't mean this to be doom and gloom, but it is an interesting situation that, that does not have an easy solution. That's true. But let's talk about something happier. Happy. Let's talk about Kyoto Animation. Yeah. Oh yes. Uh, because they recently. Uh, showed off two new commercials, which are quite exciting. Imagination and Vision. Why should we care? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because it's QAnnie. <clears throat> it's QAnnie. Um, but also because Free Iwatobi Swim Club came out of a commercial. Um, it was, yeah, they, they, they did a commercial for, I think it was a sports drink, um, and... Kari Sweat. Yeah, some, something like that, and the, they, apparently, they basically said, what, what does every, like, sports drink have? You know, girls in tight-fitting swimsuits running along a beach, whatever, right? So we're gonna do that, but it's gonna be all guys. And we're just gonna go, you should, you're gonna show you five hot guys in Speedos running along the beach, you know, doing the sports drink. Um, and that kind of blew up, and uh, it was, was was very successful. And so from that, they decided to make free you to a swim club. Um, I believe Sound Euphonium was also um, no. I'm sorry, Tobacco Market. Um, they made they made an, a, a commercial that uh, was very similar to what became a Tobacco Market. So excuse me. Um, it is certainly possible that these two commercials are indicators of upcoming Kyoto animation shows. Now, obviously, I can't show you any of these. Right. Uh, because of YouTube. Uh, the first one shows a boy growing up um, in various moments in his life, and he imagines himself being a ninja um, when a, a girl... I, I love the imagery of this, where uh, he's walking to school and a girl drops her, uh, her mitten, and he imagines himself as a ninja, you know, leaping across things, grabbing the, the scroll case, and then handing it across to the princess... Uh, who then takes the mitten from him, and then she turns out to be some you know magical girl princess thing, um, uh, and then they have this. It's little, wonderfully cute. It's wonderfully <laughs> cute, very much so. Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and again, theme of imagination. So that that totally makes sense. Um, do you think this might turn into something? And if so, what? What would that anime series be? It's exactly what you see. <laughs> Secret Life of Walter Mitty. It's it's it's. I mean, it's yeah. it do, it's already yeah. an anime right. just in that little well, yeah, yeah. kid but, with like know. a wild imagination, right, yeah. mm-hmm. and you know this girl who probably turns out to be the popular. So what is it, Horamiya, mm. from this past mm, year, okay. or from this past season, 
where you know popular or well, I don't yeah. know if she was popular but yeah. you have the girl who seems to be more popular the kind of guy who's into like fantasy realm and mm-hmm. gaming and stuff like that mm-hmm. and they meet and find out she's a closet otaku and you know I mean it's it, mm-hmm. it's not that it hasn't been done but when Kyo Annie does it it's just it cute. just looks good yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah it just looks good so I, when I watched that, I was just like, I'd watch this series. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm on board. Where is it? <laughs> is it coming soon? Yeah. Um, the second one is called Meiji Edition, or Vision. Um, it features uh, a boy and a girl in, like, Meiji-era Japan, um, imagining, like, this awesome, almost, like, uh, steampunk-ish steampunk. future uh, from the Meiji era. Yeah. Um, there's this, like, rocket monorail which is really cool in it. Which is chugging. Which yeah. Like, oh, it's chugging like a steam <laughs> yeah. train, yeah. but it's got a rocket. I'm like, that's cool. Very, very imaginative. Yeah. Um, all that kind of stuff. Um, go ahead. That's the one That's the one I would buy into. Mm-hmm. I, I really enjoy that one. Um, well, because, you know, the Meiji was all about, Meiji Restoration was all about modernization anyway. Mm-hmm. And I like the, the part where they open up the scroll and it's just the light opens up yeah. on them and then they see, like, their town mm-hmm. yeah, just building up, up and yeah. to this, like, like, retro future, like a retro. And it's just like, it, it would just be a wonderful anime of, of them being able to travel from where they are now to a could be world, you mm-hmm. know, and just kind of going back and forth. And it just really, really mm-hmm. nice. I'd watch both of them actually. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I, I totally would too. <laughs> so the good news is they're probably making that. Um, back in 2018, they announced an anime adaptation of the 20th Century Electricity Catalog novel, um, which is the story of a 15 uh, year old living in 1907. Um, who is the sort of clumsy daughter of a sake brewer who meets up with a, uh, a young man who's very excited about the future of electricity. Um, and uh, uh, the only way to, to stop her impending marriage is to find the Electricity Catalog, which is a prediction book about the upcoming world of electricity. Wow. So, yeah. I think that's what we're getting. I what hope. was the anime? Ooh. It was the Lamplighter? Yeah. Uh, the Old Man's Lamp. Oh geez, old old yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say just, mm. that I'm to- I'm sold. Mm. I'm sold on whatever they're doing mm-hmm. with that. Just sign me up now. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Both of them. I'm with Steve on that. Both mm-hmm. of those. Sign me up. Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, the director of that short um, also directed a little show called Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. <laughs> um, <laughs> as well <laughs> as uh, the Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya. Well, Sweet. damn. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a handful of other things. Um, am I got, if I got the right one? Yeah. Um, uh, Air. Uh, Clonade. And Clonade After Story. Um, he did a bunch of storyboarding episode directing and advising on K-On. Um, he directed Love, Chinubio, and Other Delusions. <laughs> yeah. Nichijo. Uh, sound euphonium Christmas card list <laughs> <laughs> and a bunch of other work on various um, <laughs> all these uh, shows I love various shows what's interesting um, he has a like storyboard and episode directed uh, episode 132 of Pokemon because why not um, everybody has at this point yeah exactly <laughs> it's like one piece guest director of the month <laughs> right <laughs> of the of the episode very much so <laughs> um, what's also remarkable is that um, uh, this is not a a, a young buck. Uh, he also worked on um, uh, I'm looking for it. Uh, do do do. Uh, He's Tezuka's uh, mentor. <laughs> uh, no, um, he also worked on Fushigi Yugi, Fancy Lala, Crusher Joe, oh. um, wow. uh, and wow. Kimigori Orange Road. Good lord! Yeah. <laughs> Uh, now those are you know storyboarding and you know bits and pieces and so forth. But he's been around. God. Yeah. So and obviously this, you know, uh, that was announced before the fire. So who knows when this is all going to come together? Right. But here's hoping. That'd be pretty cool. 
Say, I, I have to imagine that given the you know the high status of Kyoani that they yeah. probably do not have Mappa's problems <laughs> with getting people to apply. I, yeah. I imagine Kyoani's probably have to right. turn people away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, they're also in Kyoto, so very different sort of. Yeah. Um, just environment in general. Yeah. Um, people might want to live there more. Yeah, maybe. Uh, all right, so. We've talked about NFTs before. We've talked about mm -hmm. cryptocurrencies before. What could be a better combination than NFTs and anime merchandise, right? Um, oh, Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have two different uh, announcements here. Um, uh, one is for a new company called Rakuza. They're an NFT marketplace for anime cells. As far as I can tell, uh, and, and they're unclear on this, oh. they have basically scanned a bunch of anime cells and are selling those scans as NFTs. So again, an NFT is a non-fungible token. It's a unique digital item that only one person can own, cryptographically and cryptocurrency, blockchain-wise. Um... So you own this one physical item, or this one digital item. No one else can own the digital item. And they're doing that with anime cells. What happens to the cell? Hmm. Unclear. It should also be pointed out, they admit they have not obtained express permission for the transactions from the copyright owners of the anime cells. Presumably they just have the cells or got access to the scale just cells, stop. scanned them, and are doing uh. NFTs of those scans. Because technically, and, and again, to be clear, an anime cell is, you know, if you have the cell, that means that that company got rid of them at some point. Maybe they sold them, maybe they trashed them, whatever. So they, don't, they no longer you know, physically possess those cells. It's not like anyone's you know, breaking and entering or anything here. So, you know... Um, Copyright on a cell is a somewhat gray area, but also, <laughs> what exactly do you own <laughs> if you have an right. NFT of a scan of an anime cell? Nothing. That's <laughs> what you own. <laughs> now, to now, be clear, uh, yeah, I uh... when you know. What makes this even more complicated is we're not talking random stuff. We're talking Ghibli cells. They're, they've got Nausicaa. They've got you name it. They've they're, they're selling those on their their um, their thing. This is the North Star, a bunch of other stuff. Dragon Ball Z, etc. Um, uh, Touch Yu Yu Hakusho, um, Neon Genesis Evangelion. There is a, uh, let's see if we can find something a little more interesting here. So there's an, um, let's, let's find a cell, anime cell. Um, well, here, here's a mm -hmm. question for you about mm -hmm. this. Yeah. So they have a cell. Yeah. Somehow. Either they purchased yeah, yeah, yeah. it or mm -hmm. arguably someone, you know, they yeah, know has a cell yeah. and they mm -hmm. say, hey, can we scan your cell? Mm hmm do you then create by that scan and creating the M NFT thing, mm -hmm. do you then create two distinct sellable items? The person who owns the cell can then sell the cell to someone else. Correct. But yes. They can. Only the cell. Because mm -hmm. in yes. allowing the scan, is there something that rides with that that says, you know, hey, Brent, you can sell your cell to Steve. But Steve, when you get this, the rights to that image have been sold to a third party. You cannot scan this or have anyone else scan your cell because this is the agreement we have. I mean, uh, when you say cell, you're talking about the physical cell or the digital cell? Yes, the physical cell that you, once it's yeah. scanned, the oh. digital image, you can sell that, but you can't sell, a, you can't rescan the original cell because the, that the, right there, is gone. There is no, no, there is no mention I have found here whatsoever about the physical cells. So you could take the physical cell and take it to somebody else, have them digitally scan it. And make a new NFT. That's 
Yep. Yeah. That's, that's why this is stupid. Well, you see, the whole point of the NFTs were to to create a digital piece of art that is unique to itself. Mm-hmm. Like when the person who who um, took the video of I forget who it was that that made the slam dunk. You know, mm-hmm. It's only a thirty second video, dude. So for like sixty thousand dollars, the reason why that makes it individual piece of art is because it was one person with one camera at a particular angle. Mm-hmm. It's all that. It's mm-hmm. just that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that person can create a NFT to sell it. Mm-hmm. And it's an individual item. You can't right. really rec- recreate that. Mm-hmm. So while the person, the original person who took it still has the video, mm-hmm. you know, it's theirs. This other person who bought this, it's a single item that they bought. And now a cell is like is 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 not is not a thing that is just unique to itself. It's mm-hmm. unique to itself, but it's not unique in terms of making it digital, mm-hmm. right? Right. So you when copy. you make it digital, it, it doesn't. It, it you can just keep copy, 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 mm-hmm. copy, and it doesn't mean anything. And you can just sell it. Whereas the the word person who made the video can sit there and say, no, this is actually my video. And you're selling a copy. This is why when you do a photograph, you sell multiple prints. You sell like you know, mm-hmm. 10 prints, one of ten, one of mm-hmm. two of ten, three of ten, and then that way you may offer of your 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 print. And you, as the holder of the original, you can do whatever the hell you want. Mm-hmm. You want to make more of those? You can. So the person who made the the, the digital of the, the, of the basketball player, if he wants to do it again, he can. Mm-hmm. Right. Sal does it. They can do that, but it, but the value is 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 not. There's, you know, why would you do that? Well, you, you know, know it's, it's, it, here's here's the thing, though. You know, it's not. It, it, it no longer becomes unique. You know, I've I've I pulled up the, the site and they're selling uh, now on sale a set of Princess Mononoke of Yakul, just Yakul. On a, on, a, on a green background. Um, it is currently um, priced at $8,391 for the NFT. Yep. Yep. Um, here is Kenshiro from Fist of the North Star with some cards flying at him for $9,888 US dollars. Uh huh, that's what they're charging for these things. Um, gone with his fishing rods for three thousand. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say is that the person who holds the cell is the person who holds the value. Yeah, mm-hmm. the value is not in the NFT. It's mm-hmm. who holds the cell. It's, it is is the point that I was trying to make. So yeah, cells, exactly. So that so so the NFTs. That's why the NFTs don't hold value mm-hmm. um, yeah. or you know, of the cell because they don't. They don't mean anything. If, if you, unless of course the person says, "Well, I own the cell, and uh, mm-hmm. I'm going to only make one NFT as yeah. long as that person owns the cell, and only that one NFT exists, then you have yeah, some value." Have yeah. Yeah. As as that, well, the point was made earlier. You sell to somebody else, and that mm-hmm. person says, "Aha! But I own it now, so I can do what I want." With it. Yeah. Here's my question: Where are they finding these? Ghibli cells. Cells, yeah. Because... I think it's a scam, honest to God. How on earth are you finding this many high-quality Ghibli cells to scan to make available? That's what I don't understand. Or Dragon Ball Z or whatever. Well, I'm imagining it's somebody... Someone is a collector that somehow has these, and they're just reaching out and asking if they could take a scan of this for, for I don't know, for what? For, like, a flat fee? I don't know. Yeah, maybe. You know what it I mean? Is, right. Because I um, doubt they're up fronting the money for all those high-quality cells. Yeah, right. You know, um, in the hopes that it's going to go and, and, and super the other hot part, viral, but I don't know. And how do you how do you, how do do you you prove the, pro, the providence? Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They have about 400 anime cells. Um, uh, uh, in here. I should also point out, just to add another layer to this, there is in the industry what they call Sarah cells. These are cells where the original creators, the, orig- the original company, especially knowing this is going to be a really popular anime, 
they will reserve some set of cells. So, for example, Genda Wakari like this, right? That, that's an iconic right, image. Iconic. Right. Um, they will actually produce, they will actually, they will essentially photocopy that and produce like 500 limited edition copies of that. So you're getting a transparency of that and there are only 500 ever made, but you are getting that. So they, they exist in their, their, you know, much less expensive than the original cell, but limited edition, good thing. They're selling those on here too. As an NFT. So you're buying a copy of a cell as a digital token. But I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand why people would do this. Uh, and again, for a thousand dollars. Is this just preying on like the uninformed? So somebody's like, no. I desperately need a yeah. uh, a Pokemon something or other, yes. and here it is. It's on this site. Oh look, it's only five thousand mm -hmm. dollars. That's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yikes. And you will and get meanwhile a JPEG. <laughs> Right, and then meanwhile, you go, wait, wait a minute, I see this if I Google it, and I can right-click and save. Hey! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very, very odd. Um, and again, to be clear, there are m multiple questions that could be resolved with more details on the site. How it do. We are speculating a lot about how this whole process yeah. works. So they could clear things up, and it, it, could, it could make more sense. But as presented... <laughs> It seems, um, so yeah, I'd, not something that I would necessarily recommend that folks jump into. Just saying. I'd like to hop in my time machine, go forward about 25 years when somebody is going back through ancient, yeah. ancient uh, video transcripts and mm -hmm. things, watching this and going, wow, look at those old fogies talking about this <laughs> NFT stuff. They had no idea what yeah. this was about. This is the greatest idea that ever was, and they didn't get in on it. Mm -hmm. Yep, probably. But, damn it. Quite, quite likely. Also this week, other news stories that we wanted to talk about and mention, but maybe not go into as much detail. Um, um, some anime announcements. Oh, I, I forgot to mention that on that last story. One other thing on that last story. Um, just sort of in passing also, um, uh, anime, uh, Gonzo, the anime studio, has announced Samurai Cryptos, which is, a, which is a blockchain and NFT technology. The president of Gonzo said it'll create a new era of animation for the NFT era with Japanese samurai. I have what? no idea what he means. What? <laughs> and we'll focus on the keywords cipher decentral and solidarity uh and they've got a bunch of um of of featured designs by various anime creators like makoto kobayashi michinori chiba and hiroya ijima who worked on like last exile gundam double zeta skate the infinity like well-known people okay <laughs> what i hope is that this is just an anime series featuring like blockchain samurai like samurai who use the blockchain somehow and they're just like really mixing their 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 communication here and their advertising and they're just like explaining this really poorly to everybody they just have this really bizarre anime idea instead of a instead of a katana blockchain it's literally a, a block yeah, yeah. with a chain <laughs> they're the blockchain samurai oh this is about the nft thing yeah. what are you sure, talking yeah, about no sure, he has yeah. a chain yeah. and a block it's, it's it's what all the kids are talking about <laughs> here we go I, I suspect um we had a bunch of anime announced this week um see if i can get uh, sorry, one second. Uh, so we got an um, uh, announcement for anime of Mo Ipon, which is a high school girls judo manga. Watch so that, that will be coming at some point. <laughs> you did? I'll watch that. Oh, you watched it? Yeah, totally. I'll watch it. <laughs> um, uh, Kaijin Kaihatsubu no Kuritsu-san, a.k.a. Kuritsu-san in the Superhuman Research and Development Department. Um, basically, it's about a harried sort of office worker working for an evil supervillain who um, is uh, constantly prototyping new technology to use against superheroes. Um, oh, cool. Constantly, you know, answering the phone, trying to 
solve problems with all that. Sounds fun. Um, Black Alice is getting some net anime shorts. Um, it is about a girl who, a supernatural girl who grants people um, uh, something to solve their problems. If the people are pure hearted, it actually does solve their problems. If they are not pure hearted, things do not end as well as you might expect. Hell girl. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Um, there's going to be a new mini anime series based on Card Fight Vanguard called uh, Mini Vanguard Large, which, you know, if you're into that, go for it. Mini um, Vanguard Large. Vanguard Large. Mini, yeah, Mini Vanguard Large. Mini Vanguard Large. Yeah. Not just Vanguard. Um, <laughs> like, oh, what, what also makes it interesting is they, they, in the announcement, they announced the anime dub, or the English dub, rather. Oh. So they're producing the dub, like, right away, which is kind of interesting. Um, Skate the Infinity is getting a second season. Um, and a lot of folks enjoyed Skate the Infinity, so that's cool. Um, also, uh, Isekai Quartet um, is getting an anime film in 2022. Film. <laughs> yeah. That would be awesome. Um, and obviously the, the cast and staff from the first two seasons will be returning for that. Um, in addition, um, Star Wars... I, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I'm really not sure how you're going to make his quartet into, like, movie length. <laughs> it, it's, you know, it's just great fun the way it is. Mm -hmm. And it's short. Yeah. So, okay. Are you just going to have, like, 40 <laughs> episodes crammed together in, like, a half an hour? <laughs> you know, it's like... It will be epic. <laughs> it might well be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. They, 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 no, they, they might have a lot of fun with that one. I can, I can imagine them saying, we have 90 minutes... Oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah, that's what I can't wait to see how it goes. You're like, oh, is it going to move in? Train? No, it's not. But, but we'll enjoy it. Exactly. Um, uh, Disney uh, revealed Star Wars Visions, which will be a series of, mm -hmm. uh, anime, of anime shorts set in the Star Wars universe. Um, so that sounds cool. A lot of cool uh, anime creators involved in that, uh, which is, you know, a fun sort of turnaround, considering you know all of the the Japanese inspirations on original Star Wars and samurai armor and so forth and so on. Um, the Full Metal Alchemist manga will be celebrating its twentieth anniversary, uh, July twelfth, with a special YouTube program with announcements. Hmm. Hmm. You know, perhaps they will announce something anime re related. We will see. Who knows. There will be another 10,000 episodes of <laughs> FMA. Awesome. Um, uh, More Hosoda's Bell um, will be a, yeah. an official selection at Cannes, which is yeah. pretty cool. Awesome. Yeah. So um, it will be screened first at Cannes, the first Hosoda film to get a, uh, an official selection at Cannes, which is good for them. Good for yeah. them. Um, and finally, some manga announcements. Um, ICV2 uh, reported that uh, North American manga sales were an all-time high in 2020. Um, a lot of folks reading the manga in their COVID time. This is their this passed the previous record, which was set in 2007. So it's been a while. Um, manga yeah. sales have been not low, but they had not they hit that peak um, in quite a while. There was a well, there was a steep decline. Um, in 2008-2012, um, due to the global financial crisis, uh, borders going under, um, less uh, anime on North American television, and a smaller backlist of anime in North America. Um, but we're back, apparently. Well, it's like COVID time literally gave yeah. people time. Mm -hmm. you know? Right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I also think there's a little... Um, there are more anime fans now that will go back and read manga. Yeah. Um, not a ton, but that that's more common than it used to be. Um, well, I, I know for a lot of the stuff we've talked from week to week, it's like, there's some stuff I've seen I, I think I have to go see the manga because mm -hmm. I, I, I just, I'm not getting apparently all the story. Yeah. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, Bolo 13 has broken the Guinness World Record yep. for most volumes published for a single manga series with 201. Good on you, Bolo 13. Um, yeah, it, it had previously tied with Kochikame. Um, Yen Press has announced that they're going to distribute a bunch of digital manga to libraries and schools through their Comics Plus, through, a, through an app called Comics Plus. Um, it'll be mostly Star Wars and Kingdom Hearts stuff. 
Mm. Um, at least in the announcements. Um, and then finally, um, a service called Alpha Polis has launched a, uh, an, a, a manga app called Alpha for smartphones. So if you're looking for manga on digital devices, there is yet another service called Alpha Manga. Um, it'll release new manga on a weekly or monthly schedule, depending on the, the work. Obviously, some manga comes out monthly. Uh, the first three chapters for each uh, manga will be free. Hmm. Um, uh, and then beyond that, you can use in-app tickets to rent new chapters for seven days. Um, uh, you can collect bonus tickets by logging into the app. So there's some there's a little bit of gotcha in there, I think. Um, I'll be honest, I am not familiar with almost any of these manga. Um, I'm assuming Alphapolis um, Alpha Polis, um, is licensing um, less known one. Uh, uh, they are uh, they do have Gate, uh, the, the manga adaptation of Gate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hello, go. you want some more Rory? Exactly. Rory Mercury. Mercury. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, Re Monster, which I have read and very much enjoyed, um, which is a um, uh, not technically an isekai. A guy gets reincarnated. Um, but he is, like, not from Earth. He is from some, like, Final Fantasy-esque world, which may be the world he is in. But he gets reincarnated as a goblin, low-level goblin, um, and has to kind of work his way up the goblin hierarchy and so forth. Um, and, and got to make coffee and, and copies yeah, much. and run um, the mail around the office. It has some very adult content. Uh, some Some... It deals with some very adult elements in the first couple of issues, but it then does not do that later on. Um, okay. Dealing with how goblins procreate. Um, yes. So, yeah. So, just just be aware there are a few uh, things like that. But the, the, we, the manga makes it very clear that they're like... We really need to see that. And that's the thing. And they, they don't show it. They're like, this is the thing that happens, and we're going to navigate around it and not do that in the future. Right. So... Yeah, um, there's stuff where you'll be like, oh, but no, it doesn't. The know. Goblin Slayer moment of, right. oh, goodness exactly. gracious, yeah. yes. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, uh, and then everything else again. Offense and defense in Daytes, from maid to mother, the villainous of special circumstances, a gatherer's adventure in Isekai, the time I will find happiness. These are all titles on there that I've never heard of before. Hmm. Um, but I got to say, Sometimes that's joy. You know, just zipping through a catalog. Again, the first three, three issues of all of them are going to be free. Um, mm-hmm. So this might be a good opportunity to go and expose yourself to some, anime, or some manga, rather, that you're not right. normally uh, uh, available to. Normally, yeah, that's uh, how I found uh, Kurosaki Corp Service. Eh? Is, uh, yeah. Arbitrarily. There we go. Yeah. Let's just say there's something to be said for the you know the ones that are the popular and splashed everywhere don't necessarily give you as much flavor as kind of wandering into the catacomb mm-hmm. and finding a little a little gem in there. Like, exactly. Ooh. Exactly. Yeah. That, so that's all the news for the week. Thank you all for watching. We will see you all next week.